Well, as protests continue across the world, in the UK, the statue of a slave trader, Edward Colston, in Bristol, has been torn down and thrown into the harbour. In London, tens of thousands of protesters rallied for a second day with some protests increasingly violent. On Saturday, 29 protesters were arrested during clashes with mounted police near Downing Street, injuring 14 police officers. Here's some of the shocking scenes now there on the screen for you. The response from the Prime Minister Boris Johnson was one of condemnation where he said people have a right to protest peacefully and while observing social distancing but they have no right to attack the police. These demonstrations have been subverted by thuggery and are a betrayal of the cause they purport to serve. Those responsible will be held to account. Joining me now from the UK is the editor of Spiked Online, Brendan O'Neill. Brendan, talk to us about these protests. We've seen scenes here in Australia across our media all week. I have to say they match that definition of thuggery from your Prime Minister. Where's the British public on all of this? It's quite hard to tell at the moment. I expect some polls will come out this week and give us a clearer picture of where people stand. But I think there's a real vacuum of authority in Britain at the moment. I, don't, I haven't seen politicians, apart from Boris, who made a, that statement that you just quoted there, I haven't seen politicians out and death going on in any strong terms. The police have run away from some of the confrontations. The police in Bristol actually stood back and allowed the group of people to tear down the staff. Uh, and I think what a lot of members of the public will be wondering is who's running in this country right now? Is it the government or is it this kind of woke PC mob of people who I think are using the awful killing of George Floyd to express other ideas that don't really have much to do with that? Yeah, well, I was going to ask you how much of this now is almost professional activists and not a protest about uh, events in the United States or even impacts uh, in Britain of people of colour? Yeah, I think it's now completely separate. You know, everyone around the world is horrified by the killing of George Floyd. We all saw that video. We all agree that the officers need to be held to account. This is now about something else. This has now become... A, a, a kind of a, a explosion of political correctness. There is a politically correct mob running around the country who are expressing all sorts of dangerous, backwards, strange ideas. And I thought the smashing of Edward Colston's statue was a good example of that because mm. this, looked to, this looked to me like the woke Taliban. You know, the Taliban used to smash statues that it found offensive. So did ISIS. There's this year zero mentality, this idea that we must cleanse the public sphere of every bad person, every bad idea, every bad way of thinking. And I think that's incredibly intolerant. It's not progressive. And it certainly has nothing to do with the awful killing of George Floyd. Yeah, it's interesting with the, with the statue. I mean, I am sympathetic to the argument, but it's not an argument that the mob decide. It's something that's done in a very sober sense. But once you start to wipe away history, the rewriting of history is a very, 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 very dangerous thing. So I think that's a concern people have with this. And also the revisionism. If you take away Britain's involvement with the slave trade, you also take away... I think the wonderful work of people like uh, William Wilberforce, you don't have a Wilberforce anymore and you don't then contemporise and understand his fight against the mainstream at, at that time and, and a lot of the vested interests and certainly the financial interests in London if you don't have these sorts of debates in their context. That's right. And, you know, history is incredibly complex. You know, there are now people talking about tearing down the statue of Oliver Cromwell in London because of what he did to the Irish and what he did to Catholics. But he also faced down a tyrannical king and made England a republic for a short period of time, which was considered to be a, an important leap forward for this country. There's a group of students in Manchester who want to prevent the building of a statue to Gandhi outside Manchester Cathedral because he once said some racist things about Africans. But he also helped to liberate India from the empire and give birth to the largest democracy history has ever known. So historical figures are complex. History is complex. And I think it's right that history is represented on our streets. I think there's a democratic discussion to be had about whether certain statues should be removed. But this mob behavior was undemocratic, philistine, and I think it was quite extremist in the way it was done.
Well, Phil is starting in the extreme. I mean, this idea that Churchill was a racist. Uh, I think when I put up a tweet before of a, an MP, a Conservative MP, who said, well, you know, wait till they find out what the other bloke did if you think Churchill's bad. Um, <laughs> What, what do you make of the controversy? There's a piece written in the United States, Senator Tom Cotton. This is the New York Times brouhaha. Uh, now the editor responsible for that page, James Bennett, has resigned. I find it quite shocking. And I think one of the most shocking things over the past few days has been the intolerance of anyone who criticises Black Lives Matter or anyone in the case of the New York Times who publishes a senator who thinks there needs to be a stronger crackdown on protesters or rioters or looters. Now, you can agree or disagree with what Tom Cotton wrote, but it is the job of a newspaper to express all sorts of views and to give space to all sorts of opinions. Uh, numerous journalists have been sacked or suspended for criticising elements of Black Lives Matter. In the UK, a radio presenter on the Isle of Man has been suspended because he questioned the idea of white privilege. He said he, don't, he doesn't think white people like him from an ordinary background have particularly, particularly have much privilege. And there have been other cases too. And I think this incredible intolerant climate really gives the lie to the idea that this is a progressive civil rights style movement. It's increasingly coming off as an intolerant PC uh, crusade against anyone who dares to think differently from the mainstream left. Yeah, it's extraordinary. Brendan O'Neill, thank you very much for your time tonight.